Got another question on the electrical potentials topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay so starting with the definition for standard electrical potential so it's the EMF or the voltage of a half cell measured against the standard hydrogen electrode and the standard conditions are 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals and 1 mole per decimeter cubed solutions. Part B, the cell potential for the cell made from systems 1 and 2, so it's the most positive minus the least, so that's 2.71 volts. Part C, so I'll just go through the three answers here. So we're only allowed to use systems 3, 4 and 5, so I've literally just gone through them in sort of a logical order. So if you take um, systems 3 and 4 first, so we'll have a look at their relative standard electrical potentials. So you can see this one here is more positive. So the I in 3 plus 2 plus equation is going to run in that direction, left to right, which means that this one's going to run backwards. And all we need to do is get the electrons to be equal and opposite on each side. So we multiply this one by 3, which gives us that equation there. 3 and 5, so we're comparing minus 1.66 with 0.54. So this, again, this one's going to go forwards. The aluminium one's going to go backwards again. This time the electrons are 2 and 3, so we need to multiply this equation by 3. This one by 2, which gives us that. 4 and 5 now, so 0.77 versus 0.54. So the iron one is going to run left to right in the forwards direction and that one's going to go backwards. We need to double the iron one to get the electrons to cancel which gives us that equation there. Two reasons why it's uncertain whether the predictions based on the standard electro potential values might actually take place. So the conditions might be standard and you can give a kinetics reason. The activation energy might be too high or the rate too slow. Part D now, I've just copied the table and put it at the bottom there to save me going backwards and forwards. So we're using the electro potential values to explain these two different reactions. So first of all, in aqueous acid, chloride ions react with ClO minus ions to form chlorine gas. Obviously dealing with these two um, redox systems. So if we we'll have a look at the electro potential values, we've got 1.63 versus 1.36. So what's going to happen here is the ClO minus ions are going to take electrons from the chloride ions and obviously generate chlorine gas in the process. So this half equation is going to run um, left to right and this one's going to run from right to left. And then if we move on to the other scenario, so in aqueous alkali, chlorine gas reacts to form Cl minus and ClO minus ions. So you can see we've got H plus ions in system 7. So if we add alkali, then it's going to react with the H plus ions and remove them. So system 7 is actually going to move more to the left to replace the lost H plus ions. And so therefore its electro potential value is going to become less positive. And if it goes below 1.36, that means that the, this one would run in the forwards direction and this one then would have to move in reverse. And you can see if this moves forwards, you're going to form Cl minus ions. And if this one's going backwards, you're forming ClO minus ions. Part E, so the oxidizing agent is the IO3 minus ion. So if you think about what's happening to the tin ions it's gone from tin 2 plus to tin 4 plus so it's been oxidized obviously the IO3 minus ions doing that and it's doing that by accepting the two electrons that the tin 2 plus has lost. And the final part we've got to construct the overall equation for this reaction um, I'm breaking it down into the two half equations first and then I'll, I'll put them together to form the redox reaction so the tin one's quite easy because all we've got to do is put some electrons in. So tin 2 plus is going to tin 4 plus. So it's obviously lost two electrons to be oxidized in that way. So two electrons go on the right. So moving on to the other one, we've got IO3 minus going to I2. 
So the first thing I want to do is balance or start balancing the atoms. So the obvious thing to do first is put a two there. So it gives me two I's on each side. I've now got six O's on the left. So if I put six H2O's on the right, that gives me uh, six O's left and right. That's introduced hydrogen. So I've got 12 H's now. So if I put 12 H plus, that gives me all the atoms I need. So the last thing I want to do is put some electrons in to make sure that the charge is the same on each side. So you can see that we've got um, 10 plus on the left, no charge on the right. So I need to bring the left hand side down to no charge. So I need 10 electrons on the left. And then to combine the two half equations, we need the electrons to disappear. So if I multiply this one by five, that's going to give me 10 electrons in a tin half equation. So when I add these two together, we'll have 10 electrons on each side and they will cancel.